Okay, today I'm going to be seeing what happens when I drop an ant off a building. Will it survive? So I have here an ant from my ant farm. It's a harvester ant. Okay, so first I'm gonna be dropping it from a height of around 12 inches. And then after this, I'll be dropping it from the top of my roof to see if it survives. So this is a 12 inch drop. Three, two, one. <laughs> No problem for it at all. <laughs> so you can see already there's differences between an ant and a human because this height was around 100 times taller than the ant. And so that's the equivalent of around a 60 foot building. And you know what would happen to a human if you were dropped off something 100 times your height? You would definitely not live through that. But for the ant, it seemed no problem at all. But what if we drop it off something much taller, like the top of my roof? So I'm gonna aim for this board below. I don't know at all if I'm gonna be able to drop the ant on top of the board. I made it white so it's easy to see. But let's see if the ant survives being dropped from that high. Okay, first let's get to the top of my roof. Okay, let's get up here, drop them off. Whoa. Okay, here we go. Three, two, one. Oh, he bounced off. Did you lose him? Where is it? Oh yeah. Okay. It's okay. He's like the Red Bull ant. <laughs> So you can see that the ant easily survived a fall from that height. But why is it that an insect can fall from a height much taller than a human can fall from and still survive? So as you drop something, initially it drops and it accelerates at a constant acceleration. But as it gets moving faster and faster, the airspeed around it gets higher and higher, and eventually that airspeed gets pushing on it fast enough that it stops accelerating altogether and starts just moving at a constant velocity. So that means that no matter how high you drop something, eventually it reaches a constant velocity. And that velocity is called its terminal velocity. So terminal velocity is actually proportional to mass divided by a projected area. So that's basically the area that your shadow would make on the ground. And so an ant has a tiny mass to area ratio. So it doesn't have a very high velocity as it falls. So looking back at the footage here, it's actually easy to tell the terminal velocity that the ant reached here because each panel of my house was around seven inches wide and I was filming at 60 frames per second. So in each frame, the ant moved around five inches. So that comes down to around 17 miles per hour. The only literature I could find on the terminal velocity of an ant reference around 3.7 miles per hour. So this is much faster than that reference there, but probably because the harvester ant is a pretty big ant. But for bigger objects like humans, we have a terminal velocity around 200 kilometers an hour. You definitely don't want to hit the ground going 200 kilometers per hour. And the reason for the differences in those terminal velocities comes from the difference of mass to area ratio. In fact, there's a great poem by the great biologist Haldane, and it goes like this. It's called On Being the Right Size. It says, to the mouse and any smaller animal, it presents practically no dangers. You can drop a mouse down a thousand yard mine shaft and on arriving at the bottom, it gets a slight shock and walks away, provided that the ground is fairly soft. A rat is killed, a man is broken, a horse splashes. For the resistance presented to movement by the air is proportional to the surface of the moving object. An insect, therefore, is not afraid of gravity. It can fall without danger and can cling to the ceiling with remarkably little trouble. It can go in for elegant and fantastic forms of support, like that of the daddy long leg. So basically what he says in his poem 
is that insects aren't afraid of gravity because they're never gonna get hurt by gravity. And the other thing that's different for the ant is it's going at a slower terminal velocity, that's true, but it also has a much lower mass, which means it has a much lower momentum. And so when it hits the ground, the impact is much less. So for a human, even if you hit the ground at only 17 miles per hour, you could still hurt yourself pretty bad. You might break a leg or something. So the ant has the advantage that when you drop it from a high point, it has a slow terminal velocity and also it has a low momentum so the impact is much less whenever it does hit anything. Hey everyone, if you didn't notice, I'm wearing my very own Action Lab t-shirt and you can have this shirt too if you go to theactionlab.com or click the link in my description. And what's even cooler about it is it glows in the dark. Head over to theactionlab.com or click the link in my description to go get your very own Action Lab t-shirt today. And if you haven't subscribed to the Action Lab yet, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell to be notified when my latest video's out. And also head to theactionlab.com to check out my Action Lab subscription box. This is a box where you get quarterly shipments sent to your house and you can do experiments similar to the ones that you see me do on my channel. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.